You're listening to the weekly Parsha podcast with Ari Goldweg, recorded with Hashem's never ending assistance in Ramah Beit Shemesh Israel 5782, 2022. This week's Parsha is Parsha's Ekev. In our Parsha this week, Moshe Rabbeinu is reminding the Jewish people of their journey through the wilderness, through the Midbar. Vizacharta, he says in chapter 8, verse 2, Vizacharta is Kol Haderech Asher Halicha Chashem Lakech Azeh Arboim Shan Midbar. You should remember the entire path that you traversed during these 40 years in the Midbar. God wanted to test you. Would you keep His commandments? What's inside of your heart? How do you feel? God gave you difficulties, He made you hungry, and He gave you food to still that hunger. He gave you the miraculous bread of Mon that you never saw before and your forefathers never saw. Miraculous bread. What is the teaching for all time? That we don't live by bread. We don't live alone by bread. That's not how we live. We don't live by providing for ourselves with parnaso, with livelihood. What is it that gives a person a person life? It's that which Hashem says, the Word of God. Whatever comes out of the mouth of God, as it were, that's what causes a person to live. Hashem breathes life into us. Hashem's Word, as the, as the Mephorshim explain, is a reference to Torah, the teachings of Hashem, the teachings, the spiritual teachings of, of Yiddishkeit are that which gives us life. It's not enough to have a physical existence. We need to also sustain ourselves spiritually with the word of Hashem. And last we come lastly we come to the Pasuk which I'm going to focus on today. Simlascha Your clothes did not wear out. Your feet, your feet did not become tired. They didn't, they didn't become, you know, when you're walking without shoes or you're walking, your feet can become blown up. Your feet didn't become blown up. Zerabim shana for 40 years. This entire time in the 40 years. An amazing thing. And I want to read to you an amazing medrash. It's a medrash in Shira Shirim. The medrash talks about this amazing idea. What, what is the idea behind the fact that the clothes never wore out? What other miracles did the Jewish people encounter, experience in their time in the, in the Midbar? But also, before we even get to the Medrash, it's important to point out, which is why I read the Pesukim before. Hashem is showing us, this is, this is the path that we went on. This is the miraculous way that we journeyed. And He mentions the fact that He gave us the Mun, He gave us the miraculous bread, which our sages tell us, the, the Mun was completely Nivla B'mayayim. It was completely consumed with the, within the innards of the person. He didn't have to go to the bathroom. But besides for that, what was the teaching of it? What was the teaching of the man? It's that Hashem is the one who provides for you. And, Moitzah Pi Hashem. That which comes out of the mouth of Hashem, as it were. The, the word of Hashem. Besides for the food, there's the word. We are sustained by the word of Hashem. By God's breath, as it were, or by God's Torah, by the instructions for life that we have. Why does that come? Why does that come immediately before this concept of simlascha lebalsam elacha? Your clothes didn't wear out. What is what is the connection between these two concepts? And this question is deepened by the pasuk in Shir Hashirim, because the pasuk in Shir Hashirim, which we're going to read the medrash upon with, upon that that pasuk, speaks also about something that has to do with taste and, and sweetness in the mouth. And then it goes on to talk about clothing. So what is the connection between that which we eat or that which comes out of our mouth, the, the words of Torah, and our clothing? This is the, this is the puzzle. The puzzle says in Shir Hashem, it's like a Song of Songs, the awesome love song of Hashem for the Jewish people. Noifesti Kala. 
It speaks of the, the honey which drips from, from the lips of the, of the wife, of the bride of Hashem. Who's the bride of Hashem? It's the Jewish people. Underneath your tongue is honey and, and milk, delicious tastes. Right? Interesting that honey is one of the references in the Pasuk to the taste of the mon. And the Pasuk ends off with the fact that the smell of the garments of Hashem's beloved, which is the Jewish people, the smell of our garments is like the smell of the Lebanon. And as the Medrash talks about, there's a smell of Gan Eden, a smell, whatever this means, we need to understand, there's a smell of the Garden of Eden, which accompanies the clothing of the Jewish people. What is the idea behind this smell? What is the idea behind the taste? It's very interesting. I'm not going to read this completely inside, but I want to point out that in the Medrash, in explaining the concept of the, of the honey that's dripping from the mouth, from the lips of the bride, which is the Jewish people, it speaks of two things that are connected to the mouth. One is the concept of prophecy, the concept of speaking about, really the prophets, their purpose was to give us musr, to give us direction, to speak what will happen in the future if we don't follow the word of God. And the other aspect of honey which is spoken of here is the aspect of Divri Torah, words of Torah. Right, so just like we found in our Pasuk, very beautiful parallel, the concept of the mon, which is that thing which has a taste of, of honey, it parallels the moitzah pi Hashem, that which comes out of Hashem's mouth, the direction for life. And we have this concept of rech samasach rech levonoin, which we need to understand. Let's see it inside. Because it brings our Pasuk, which talks about the clothes of the Jewish people that didn't wear out. Shol Rebbe Lazar Reb Shimon as Reb Shimon Reb Yaisi ben Lekonya Chamoy. Rebbe Lazar Reb Shimon, Reb Lazar was the son of Reb Shimon Bar Yechai. And Rebbe Lazar asked the following question of his father-in-law, whose name was Reb Shimon Reb Yaisi ben Lekonya. Or like, Klei Kor Yais Yasu Im Yisrael Amidbar? The Jewish people were in the wilderness for 40 years. How did they have clothes? Where did their clothes come from? Did they bring enough clothes with them for the entire 40 years from, from Egypt? Did they bring with them, as he asks, uh, machines with which to, to weave clothing? I'm really laugh. So he says, no, they did not. Where did they get the clothing? Where, how did they dress themselves for 40 years? It's a very important... Uh, we don't know why it's very important, but it's a very important issue. So, Rabbi Shimei Rabbi Yaisi answers his son-in-law, and he says a very interesting idea. He says that the Jewish people were actually given special clothing. This is what the, uh, one of the Mephoshim here explains, the Yofa Koil. The Jewish people were given clo- special clothing at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai. Listen to this. You may, you may have heard this before, but you may have never heard this before. Incredible Medrash. Pasuk says in Ezekiel, in Yechezkel Perik Tezayim, Pasuk Yud, and I shall give you clothes, woven clothes. And the Pasuk, as Mephoshim explains, referring to the clothing at Har Sinai. What's this clothing at Har Sinai? So we might be more familiar with the fact that the Jewish people received crowns at Har Sinai, at Mount Sinai. But besides for that, it's Medrash is saying they received incredible spiritual clothing. What was the nature of this clothing? Let's see. Resimoy Omar Porpira Turgamakilas Ifalikta. In explaining this pasuk in Yechezkel, it refers to Valbishech Rikma. I gave the clothing at Har Sinai woven garments. So one pshat is it's actually um, dyed big day tcheles. It was special blue garments which indicate their uh, the Jewish people's b'nei malachim status. The fact that they were like the like princes. One explanation is the word means 
woven garments, but in any event, they were special spiritual garments. Amar lei, v'lei you call them what? It's okay, so they got that at the beginning of the 40 years. The clothing never wore out. Amar lei, v'lei karisa miyamecha, sim lascha levo samayalecha. Our Pasuk, in our, in our Parsha. Don't, don't you know? Pasuk says, your garments didn't wear out. It was a miraculous thing. They were given special spiritual garments, just like their special spiritual food, perhaps we could say. The special spiritual food, miraculously, would go into their body, be completely nivla, completely uh, absorbed into their bodies. They didn't have any extra, no refuse. So to their clothing, it never wore out. Amazing. <laughs> so he asked him, realized that Shimon says this father-in-law, did they grow? I'm saying the kids got might have gotten, imagine, a six-month-old baby gets a special uh, blue garment, a special spiritual garment, but he grows up. Very interesting. He says, we can learn from the chilazan. The chilazan was the special animal with which the dye for the treles, the blue garments, these special blue garments, or the also the treles, the blue string of the tzitzis was made. But the chilazan, which is a snail, that's what it seems, the snail, you see there's something in, in the physical realm, where a snail, it grows, and as it grows, as it gets larger, its shell also grows along with it. So the clothing also grew along with the person. So he said to, to his father-in-law, did it not require cleaning? How is it washed? How is it kept clean? You, you know, I'm saying a baby eats, it gets the food on its, on its clothing. Maybe, I don't know if mom had any kind of color, but stuff gets dirty. And this is actually, Rashi refers to this. Amazing thing. Hashem's Anani covered. His clouds of glory, they would um, use... So I don't know exactly how it worked. I don't know how you would submit it for dry cleaning at the, in the clouds of glory. But the clouds of glory served to clean the garments, to press the garments. We know that the clouds of glory were, were fire. They were fire. Didn't, wouldn't they burn the garments? Let's say, Lamad, min amiyantoin hazashe'enam is guys elabaur. There's some kind of garment that's made out of small pieces of rock. don't know exactly what it's referring to, but that's what the Mephorshim say. That the way that you clean it is with fire. So these special spiritual garments were cleaned by the Anon, by the clouds of glory. What's going on here? Did the, did the, um, did the people have any kind of kinim, which means lice? Did they, did they get any worms? So he said, look, and this is what it says, I'm just reading the words, but this is what he said. He said, when they died, in the 40 years in the Midbar, they wouldn't rot, their bodies wouldn't rot, there would be no, there would be no tolaim, there would be no worms eating the bodies. So, if that's the way it was, when they would die, it certainly was so when they were alive. And he asks the final question. Such, a, such an interesting conversation. Was there any smell from their body, from their sweat? Did they have any body odor? This brings us back to the Pasuk and Shir Hashim, which speaks about the smell. There was a, an amazing smell. The question is, did they have a bad smell from the from the from their zeya from their sweat? No, the answer is no. Next to the place where the be'er was, where the well was, the miraculous well of Miriam. So there was grass, there were herbs that would grow around that area. They would take the grass and they would they would uh, push it against their body or rub it on their body, and it would take away the smell. That's what it says in the Pasuk. In Hashem will cause me to rest 
in the in the Pasha Pshan, the Pasik is referring to Shem is causing us to rest in a field of grass. But there's a, a beauty of this grass, Bina Ois Desha. So I take that beautiful grass, the the Medrash is darshaning, and I'm rubbing it against myself to take away the smell. And as a result, there was a smell, a beautiful smell. A beautiful smell. Perhaps we could say the smell of Gan Eden, as the, actually the measure says in the previous explanation of these very same words. And that smell would go from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth, which is always, by the way, whenever you see the words one end of the earth to under the other end of the earth, it's always a reference to a higher spiritual realm which completely encompasses the realm within which we reside. King Solomon says this explicitly when he says the smell of your garments was like a smell of the Lebanon. The smell of our garments is like the smell of the Lebanon. What does this mean? What is this concept? What is the concept of smell in this context? What is the concept? How does that relate to clothing? How does it relate to the 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 honey and the milk that's under the tongue in the, in the immediately prior in the pasuk and the and the honey that's dripping from the mouth of the kala and i i believe this is my understanding of the medrash as i share with you the medrash first speaks about the concept of prophecy and it speaks about the concept of Torah. and we need to understand what is this idea of Torah? what is this idea of prophecy and how does that lead in to the beautiful smell of the garments? What is this entire discussion here? With they didn't have any smell, they didn't have their clothing always lasted. What is the idea here? What is the depth of the idea? And I believe that what it's coming to teach us is that both in prophecy and in Divrei Torah, in words of Torah, there is a special connection that we have to a higher realm. When we have a prophet, it's pretty obvious, right? The prophet has a vision. Hashem speaks to him. He relays the message of Hashem to the Jewish people. He gives them the musr, the teichecha, the rebuke that they need to hear to keep them on the straight and narrow, to keep them on the right path. And the purpose of the Torah is exactly the same. right? Where did they receive these garments? It's not a coincidence. They received these garments at Harsinai, at Mount Sinai. Do you know what that means? It means that as the Torah is being given, as the Word of God is coming down from above to below, as the direction for our lives is being given to us through prophecy, through the Torah, through the laws for life, the lessons for life that the Torah lays in front of us, we receive a garment. And this garment protects us. This garment lasts forever. This garment doesn't wear, wear out. This garment is, is a, it gives us a beautiful spiritual smell. As long as we hold on to the Torah, we are connected to the higher realm. We are connected We are connected to God's will, to God's desire, to God's speech, to God's breathing life into us. It's so beautiful, such a beautiful expression of the fact that when we keep the Torah, when we follow the word of Hashem, when we keep it properly, so the Torah keeps us. The Torah protects us. The Torah, the Torah is Shemar Aleinu. What is the clothing of a person? In the most simple, in the most simple sense, it's to protect us from the elements. You know, you go outside and it's very hot. The sun is shining on you. If you don't cover your body, you're going to get burned. If it's raining outside. If you don't cover yourself with a raincoat, you're going to get wet. You could get sick. The clothing protects us. In a physical sense, in a physical sense, but what we're saying here is even deeper and more beautiful, and that is that the Torah, the Torah provides for us a, a spiritual garment which protects us from the elements of the world. And this spiritual garment doesn't wear out. It's gone through three thousand three hundred years of bombardment by the world bombardment by all the new ideas, the Greek ideas, the Roman ideas, the even the Christian ideas and the Islamic ideas. And still, the Torah protects us. The Torah is this garment, this beautiful blue 
garment. And it's not a coincidence that it's Tcheles. Because the Tcheles, as the Chazal tell us, when we look at the, the blue string on our tzitzis, it reminds us of the sea, it reminds us of the heaven, it reminds us of God's throne of glory, which means that it reminds us of Hashem and His instructions to us. The place that He sits, as it were, the throne of His glory is that which He rides upon in this world. He is the King, right? His, king, his kingship is manifest through us when we keep the Torah. So we get this garment and we look at ourselves and we see the garment and we see what we're wearing, which is this protection of Torah. And it's very interesting because he points out over here that they did lose the crowns that we mentioned, which they received at Harsina, but they didn't lose the garment because the garment, the protection, never wears out. It never wears out. As long as we are keeping the Torah, the Torah is keeping us. The Torah is protecting us. And there's the smell. What is the concept of smell? Right? So in the, in the little piece, which I didn't read to you, immediately before it, it points out that when Yaakov Avinu, when Jacob walked in to get the blessing from Yitzchak, he should have smelled terrible because he was wearing a garment which was made out of the skin of, a, of an az, of a goat. And the smell of that kind of garment is disgusting. It's a terrible smell. And Yitzchak leans over him and he says, Wow, I smell the amazing smell of the Reach Hasada, the, the smell of the field, which Rechazal say, is actually the, the smell of the Sdei Tapuchim, the apple orchard, which is a reference to Gan Eden, to the Garden of Eden. He smelled on him Gan Eden. And when Esav comes in, he smells on him Gehenim. He smells on him the smell of the fiery, the fiery pits of hell. The smell of Yaakov Avinu, the smell of his tzitkus, the concept of smell represents the fact that this is a person who is great, who is following in the way of Hashem, who is following the instructions of the prophetess. So listening to his mother Rivka, Rebecca had instructed him, based on her prophecy, to go in and get the brachas, to get the blessings. When we follow, and we are connected to the word of Hashem, the smell, as it were, that comes out of us, the smell that anyone can see. You can see the smell, so to speak. You can recognize in somebody that they're a person that's listening to the word of Hashem. You can recognize upon a person. You can smell the person. right? Mashiach himself, it talks about him as somebody who's able to smell. Ruach HaPenu Mashiach Hashem. The smell of our, our nose. Mashiach Hashem. He's the one who has the ability to smell and see who is it that's keeping the Word of God? Who is connected to the Reach of Gan Eden, to the smell? Right? Think about smell. Smell is something which there could be across the entire house. I'm downstairs right now in my house. And Shabbos food is cooking upstairs. I can smell it. So it's something that connects you to a faraway place, to a faraway item. It could be a faraway thing. But I'm connected to it through smell. When I am keeping the Torah, when I'm listening to the prophecy, when I'm listening to the instructions contained within the Torah, I'm connecting to the smell, as it were, of Gan Eden, of the Garden of Eden, and I'm protected. I'm protected. I get the, the it's so beautiful, the Mebe air, right? Where does the grass grow that's used to, to give them a good smell? It's grass that grows around the, the well of Miriam, Miriam, Hanaviah, Miriam the prophetess. In her merit, in her, the, the well came, which is the source of life for the entire Jewish people, for a million and a half people. Around there grows the, 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 the grass, which is used to give us a good smell. When we connect to the source of life, when we connect to the prophecy, when we connect to the Torah, the instructions of, of the Torah, that's the true source of life. That's where it comes from. Then what do we have? Simlas our pasuk in our parsha. Your clothes don't disintegrate. Who you are is also represented by your clothes, right? You can tell from the clothes that I'm wearing what kind of person I am. The clothes don't make the man, but they do represent what I want to show the world, so to speak. You can see from the clothes. You can see that this person is someone who has a smell, the good smell of Gan Eden is attached to him. I want to bless you and ask you to bless me. Shem should help us, indeed, to connect to the words of, 
Torah. Recognize that these are the words of Hashem, these are the words of God given to us. Moshe Rabbeinu brought it down. We ourselves heard it at Har Sinai, Mount Sinai. We received these garments. These are, this is our protection. Hashem should help us to recognize that the Torah is our protection. It's what protects us from the elements and it's what represents to the entire world. Hashem should help us to indeed have that good smell. The smell of Gan Eden, the smell of the Garden of Eden should be exuding from us from one end of the earth until the other. Thank you so much for listening. Have a wonderful Shabbos. This podcast was made possible through the gracious donations of listeners like you. For more podcasts like this, please visit www.arigoldwag.com or search on iTunes, Ari Goldwag.